Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. We had a very weird dream in the last one with that really random creature and to be honest we don't know if it was real or not but I've noticed there's something weird on the floor down here. It seems to be a book so we're going to start off by looking at this. What's this? Is this the proof? Ooh. There's a strange stone strapped to the cover. I-A-W. Ooh, okay. Day one. Arrived after a decent day's ride from Bakewell. This is a curious place. Locals seem distant. I'm to meet my local contact tomorrow, so it'll be an early night for me. I shall try to keep a diary of my stay here and not give up by a day three of the excavation as usual. Despite the threat of possible new discoveries, I cannot stop thinking about my dear wife and wonder if I should have left her in her current state. I must have faith that she will conquer this bout of illness. Day 4. True to form, my journal has been abandoned. Let that not speak for the excitement I feel for this excavation. After much preparation, we dig tomorrow. Such an exceptional sight with a unique history. As for the dangers, we shall meet them head first. We are prepared. I also sought out a local wise woman yesterday, and she provided me with a tincture for my beloved nausea gravidarum? I'm sure she shall be pleased with it upon my return. Okay. Lo a place of miracles. A planted seed sprouted before our eyes and illuminated our path. Nature's laws hold no meaning here, but I clutch my tablet with the knowledge that it shall end this. Okay, symbols. Fine. We found the code was simply in the singularity of the characters. All eyes must face towards the seventh Archontic. Not sure what all this is. When the sun and the two moons meet, the guardian shall be defeated. Okay. Interesting. A dead language reveals the path. For thou art the moon, the chief of the stars. Listen to the things that I have said. Follow the words of my mouth. Reveal thyself to me. I heard a whisper not once, again and again. I will pour out my spirit, I will pour out my spirit, I will pour out my spirit. And this one's in red for some reason. That's weird. It appears to be a journal, full of hogwash. I don't recognise the handwriting. Hmm. Maybe Stanley knows more about it. Well, somebody put it here, so it's probably as good a start as anyone. Good morning. How's your head, Miss Bateman? That were quite the tune you treated us to last night. <laughs> to be honest, Stanley, I felt better. I take it you slid this journal under my door? I beg your pardon? The journal, Stanley. Well, I certainly did no such thing. Nor could have anyone else. You're the only guest staying here. What? What's the meaning of all this? Do you propose that it manifested itself out of thin air? Well, uh... Uh, continue accusing Mr. Kemp, it must have been him. Relent, he might be telling the truth. I think he probably is telling the truth, honestly. I'm sorry. I just don't understand how else it could have got there. So ask about the journal. Are you sure there was no one else here overnight? Without doubt. How very, very peculiar. So, what does it say inside? Uh, yeah. Let's, let's show him. Take a look. Well, I can't make head nor tail of it. Neither can I. Maybe someone else in the village can help you with it. Yeah, maybe. I've noticed this thing here is flashing. I'm not sure what that is. Stone. What do you make of this stone? That's a funny looking thing. It's got a cockerel on it. Yes, but have you seen anything like it? Never. Hmm. Let's tell him about the dream. Do you ever have strange dreams, Stanley? Me? I sleep as sound as a baby. <laughs> I had one such dream last night. It was so vivid. What were it about? Explain the dream or change the subject. Yeah, let's explain it. I was at Hobbs Barrow. Oh? But everything was different. Great peaks soared in the distance. And there was a creature. A creature, you say? Yes, a short robed fellow eyes as black as pitch. It told me that my father had been there in Hobbs Barrow many years ago, but something went wrong and the creature helped him escape. It said that I would find proof in the morning. Oh, the journal. You've had a premonition, lass. Could be. Please, Stanley, I've no time for that nonsense. But I'll admit it's a strange coincidence. 
Now, what did I tell you about Hobbs Barrow? That I should leave it alone? Aye. Hogwash. <laughs> Your dream reminds me of a story from my childhood. An old folk tale about Hobbs Barrow. So ask about the folk tale then. What is this folk tale you mention? Well, when I were a wee boy, there were talk of a goblin. Ah. They say he lived inside Hobbs Barrow. A goblin. Hence the name Hobbs Barrow. Oh, Hobgoblin, or, yeah. Coming from Hobgoblin, of course. Unfortunately, I don't remember anything else about it. I was told not to believe in such fairy tales, Stanley. Don't close your mind to such things, lass. I'm sure Mr. Shoulder will tell you more. Perhaps, if I ever meet him. Yeah. Goodbye. See you soon. All right, what? No, no, I want to... Good morning, Mr. Kemp. Who's this? Good day, Miss Tompkins. I'm here for his lordship's paper. Sorry, lass. Mr. Price hasn't dropped them off this morning. I heard he actually left the village yesterday. Indeed, I can vouch for that. Ma'am, good day. Oh, dear. His lordship won't be pleased. My sincerest apologies, Miss Tompkins. I'll come back in a few days. Ta-ra. Goodbye. All right, let's see what this thing is. It's an, oh, it's the knife that that guy was using before. All right, let's see if we can take that. <sighs> no, Goodness it's... me, I can't budge it. Be careful, Miss Bateman. You'll cut yourself. Maybe. I spent all morning trying to get that bloody thing out. I shall be having words with that scoundrel next time <laughs> he shows his face. Well, maybe we need an item. <sighs> Curses. We have our very own Excalibur. Yeah. It's all yours if you can pull it out, King Arthur. <laughs> all right. Can we use anything on that? Uh, maybe the glove? No, that won't achieve anything useful. No, okay. Maybe the chisel? I do not wish to damage Mr. Kemp's table any further than it already has been. Okay, so we're going to need something there. Um, probably not anything we have, though, I wouldn't have thought. All right, well, let's head out. Not sure what we're going to do today. Oh. Right, I need to convince Mr. Bryden to let me excavate Hobbs Barrow. Oh, yeah. And find out where this journal came from. Curses! I forgot I had this worm in my pocket. Poor thing is dead now. Rest in peace, Kenneth. Oh, I wonder if we could have done something about that. Maybe we were supposed to put it somewhere. Who's this? Good day. I'm still setting up my stall. Come back later. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Fine. You, uh, yeah, you do that. So we need to go to um, back to the farm. That's going to be our our stop. Um, Let's just look at the to-do list. Yeah, literally. Find out about the journal. Got to find, convince him. Someone must know about the journal. And find out about the stories. Okay, well, you know, it's a starting point. We'll go to the farm first. Ah, Wally. Hello, Wally. Go away. You gave the door back to my sister. Yep, we did. It wasn't very nice of you to bury her favourite toy, Wally. I gave it to the fair folk. And you stole it back from them! You don't really believe in fairies, do you? You're old enough to know better. They're real! And thanks to you, I'm cursed! <laughs> There's no such thing as curses either, Wally. Go away! Alright, doesn't seem very happy to see us, does he? Oh, nice. So we, we come straight back to the, the farm. Let's uh, see if the goat's still here. Yep, it's still here. All right, we probably don't want to mess with the goat, I don't think. Let's knock on the door. Hello? Is anyone home? Mr. Bryden doesn't seem to be here right now. Ah, uh, of course he's not. A bit later. Of course he's not. Can oh, we go this way? Smell of Can we go through this? Oh, we can. Alright, let's uh, let's take a look at the barrow again, see if anything's changed. No, doesn't look like it. Alright, well, um, I suppose probably let's just head back to town. 
Maybe the, the vicar can help us out with some of the stories and things. He knows quite a lot. Uh, but he doesn't appear to be in here. The flowers have long since dried out. I don't want them. Can we... No, we can't take anything. Fine. Maybe he's in the, uh, the house nearby. It's locked. Locked. Fine. Which one was the vicarage? It was back, back in the town, wasn't it? Oh, no, here he is. <laughs> Good morning, Father Roach. Ah, Miss Bateman. What a pleasure to see you again. Have you tracked down Mr. Shoulder yet? Nope. Don't get me started. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, so us about the journal. Do you recognise this journal? Hmm, what a tatty old thing. You want to take better care of your possessions, Miss Bateman. It's not mine. Then whose is it? That's precisely what I'm trying to find out. Yep. I'm afraid I can't help you. I haven't seen it before. Ah. Huh. Let's ask about the stone. What do you make of this stone? Hmm. I don't recognise the symbol from any Christian iconography. Did you make it yourself? No. Never mind. Himself? What brings you to the square today? I'm meeting a couple of young congregation members to go over some scripture. You're welcome to join us. Thank you, Father Roach, but I have quite a busy day ahead of me. We will be at St. Edmund's, should you wish to join us later. Fine. What do you know of Lord Panswick? Oh, yes. A rather important fellow around here. His vast land holdings give many a steady employment. I hear he is renovating an old chapel on his land. Aye, I've heard such reports. He believes this to be a godless land. Something I wholeheartedly disagree with. To which god his chapel will be dedicated to remains a matter of concern. <laughs> Why do you say that? Oh, my apologies. Hmm. Don't listen to my oafish conjecture. He's let something let slip. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. He's let something big slip there, hasn't he? Oh dear. That's very interesting. Alright, maybe we see if our friend is over this way. The one who lives here. Where is everyone? Mr. Long mustn't be in. Everyone is gone. Uh, all right. Well, should we go back to here? Ah. Thomasina. Good morning, Arthur. You look a bit addled. Are you feeling all right? I am not used to drinking as much as we did. <laughs> Aye, my head is pounding. To tell you the truth, Arthur. I've had a somewhat puzzling morning. Oh? Someone slipped this journal under the door of my room. Whose journal is it? I have no idea. The text refers to some sort of excavation. Well, Stanley must be playing tricks on you. He swore his innocence. I thought perhaps you might have done it? No, it wasn't me. That's for certain. Somehow I have a clear memory of last night. So us about the journal. I wonder who left me this journal then. Mind if I take a closer look? Please go ahead. The writings of a madman. I don't disagree. Did the sketches mean anything to you? No, not at all. But they turn me stomach. You might want to show this to Mother Mildred. Uh, who's Mother Mildred? Who is Mother Mildred? Some think her a witch. A witch? Aye. <laughs> she might be able to help you with the symbols. Where can I find her? She lives alone in a little cottage within Hearn Wood here. Oh. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding her. Thanks, Arthur. I don't, You're welcome. I don't think we saw that house before. What do you make of this stone? It's a good shape for skimming across water. What is it? I'm not sure. It was strapped to the cover of the journal. How mysterious. Last I night. I had a splendid time last night. I even remember most of it this time. Thanks for listening to me going on. I really appreciate it. The feeling is mutual. Thank you too, Arthur. Railway station. Shouldn't you be manning the station? The line is down. Track damage between Bewley and Bakewell. No trains for a day or more. Does that mean I'm stranded here? For the time being, Thomasina. Capital. <laughs> Mother Mildred. 
Why do people think Mother Mildred is a witch? Just because a woman lives alone in the woods doesn't mean she flies about on a broomstick. There's more to it than that. They say she lays with demons. Mm. Who are they? Oh, you know, local folk. Hogwash. Some also go to her for potions and spells. Interesting. Spells? Come now, Arthur. Truth be told, she's a nice old lady. I sometimes see her foraging in the brambles around here. Will she burn at the stake sometime soon? <laughs> I think it's backward in Beulet, Thomasina. But we're not that backward. Sorry, Arthur. I only meant to tease. Goodbye. Tara. All right. Well, interesting. We're going to have to track down this Mother Mildred then, who could potentially be a witch. We'll find out. So as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne Nate, Termly Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, Barry Aldridge, Hobo, Numinous, Coumadin, and Paul Leone, and I'll see you next time.